All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. So I have a, a huge training in store for you today. And here we go. So today we're talking about the blueprint. And it's we're starting the conversation around the delivery of your program. And one of the most important questions your clients will want to know is how will this program work? They want what I call the blueprint or your blueprint. And there are 10 main delivery components of your blueprint. We'll go through all 10 of them today. Uh, one of them we're going to go into even bigger detail next time. I'll show what that is. And after today, you'll get a copy of this, which is the blueprint inventory where you can start brainstorming each of the 10 items. And I want to take you through them one by one right now. Um, and then after today, when you get the replay of today's session, you'll also get access to this tool. So the first, maybe the biggest decision is the start date. So if you're going to run, let's say a 12 week program or eight week or whatever time duration it is, you need to launch. And in my experience, launching is sometimes the most uh, anxiety inducing part because it's where you might, if, especially if it's your first time doing this, there's the most discomfort and it's all around commitment. Um, so that's where we're going to start. And part of this process together is that I want you to commit to a start date, and then we will reverse engineer everything from there. Now, if you don't already have a start date, uh, guess what? We're going to commit to one. And my suggestion for all of you, unless there's a reason not to do this, is to choose the first week of May as your start date. So that will give us the time in this program to create all the assets you need to figure everything out. Um, and if it's your first time launching a program, we're going to do what's called an MVP, uh, Minimum Viable Program, which means you don't have to have a lot of things figured out. You can have the simplest version of it to launch so that you don't get in your own way. You don't become a bottleneck for yourself. You don't have too much complexity. And I will show you um, everything you do need and we'll have it all done by the first week of May. Uh, and then there's people like Sophie who's starting March 16th, who's been around for a bit. So you probably have uh, a bit of a head start, and that's awesome, Sophie. Congratulations. And the next thing to think about is duration. So what does that mean? It means how long will the program run? And again, the, if, if this is your first time starting a program, my suggestion is 12 weeks. Why 12 weeks? Because people like to think in, in uh, psychological numbers. Um, so in this case, a quarter, meaning like three months. 90 days. Uh, we can think that far out. Sometimes it's harder to think past 90 days. Um, and in your, based on your map, once we finalize that kind of stuff, it may need to be shorter, but this gives you enough time to create the transformation you want. Um, and by the way, you may also iterate over time. So you may start with 12 weeks and then after doing it a couple of times or running a few groups or cohorts, you'll, you might think, well, I don't need 12 weeks. It might be eight or 10, or you might think, you know what? I really need more time with my, with my clients. Let's make it 15 or 20. The, the idea is to, to start with a basic framework and then think of it as an experiment. And the way, um, let, let, me, let me tell you a quick story. When people come up to me and say, Hey, I'm thinking of doing an event. What advice do you have for me? Because, um, I've been doing events my whole life. I love producing events. I'm very good at that. And my advice to someone thinking of doing their first event is this, plan your second event. And they always look at me funny, say, thinking, what are you talking about? And what I'll say is that usually when you do an event, you don't only want to do one. It's probably something you want to do more than once. And we put so much energy and attention into the first event and you may have people coming to your event because of novelty, because it's your first time, they're excited, they want to support you. But if you're not already thinking about how to have a second event, you're, you're gonna, yeah, it's a giant hill to climb and it's way more challenging. But if you're already planning the second and third event while you're starting the first one and thinking about continuity and thinking about 
how to make it a thing that happens more than once, your life will be way easier. So in the same context, when you're thinking about your groups, um, if this is your first time ever doing a coaching program or a group, think about your second group. And what I mean by that is let's make the first one as simple as possible so that you can iterate and make the second cohort even better. And then the third cohort, even better than that. Not that the first one's going to be bad, but the first one will be your worst one for sure. Your fourth one, your 10th one will be way better than your first. Let's make the first one awesome and make them better and better as you go. The next thing to think about from a structure perspective is your coaching call schedule. So on what date and time and frequency will you run your coaching calls? For example, are you doing it Mondays at 11 o'clock or Tuesdays and Thursdays, or how long will these calls be? All these kinds of, of uh, logistical questions. And um, you want to have a careful balance between what's best for you and what's best for your clients. Uh, sometimes we may need to sacrifice at the beginning to make it what's best for our clients. And it may not fit your schedule the best. And then over time, as you keep iterating uh, and you start to build a brand around this thing, then you make it way better for you. Um, so my suggestion, again, if this is your first time doing this, once a week for 60 minutes as um, a consistent thing. And don't, um, don't do it where it's a different day and time each week because that creates complexity. And people like repetition, they like consistency. So make it every Thursday at 4 p.m., every Tuesday at 11 a.m. for an hour. And here are some things to think about when you're coming up with when you're gonna host. Um, depending on who your dream clients are and you know what, when are they most likely available and not available? What are their daily routines? Um, so some examples, do they have children that go to school? So you may not want to do 8 a.m. If you're serving an audience that has children that go to school, because that's like the hectic time in, in a household kind of thing. So you, you want to try to think about these kinds of routines and habits that your clients may have, you know, do they work from home? Um, I think in the past two years, there's been a big shift in, in remote work and working schedules. So all these things may have changed. Uh, but then are your clients, for example, entrepreneurs, where if you think of all of our schedules, it's way different than someone who works a nine to five kind of job, or do they work night shifts? So these are the kinds of things to think about. And then what's most convenient for you? Um, not just convenient, but when do you have the most energy? When, when are you going to be the most vibrant and alive? I learned from uh, my fiance and partner, Dr. Stephanie, that uh, based on my hormonal landscape, I shouldn't start talking until noon. And I, I don't want to get too deep into this, but based uh, my, I believe my testosterone is highest in the morning and that's when I'll get my best strategy thinking work. So I usually set up my entire calendar where I do not talk until noon, meaning I don't have calls or coaching calls or anything like that. And then my entire afternoon is me talking when my testosterone goes down, estrogen goes up and that's suited for me uh, being more in conversation, coaching, teaching. So that's what works for me. Then there's coaching delivery. And uh, Jenna just asked, is it ever good to pull your clients to see what time is best for most people? Uh, yes, with an asterisk, asterisks. I can never pronounce that word, a tiny little star. Um, you may run into people saying the best time for me is 4 p.m. on a Tuesday. And, and then the other half of the group says, no, the best time for us is 7 p.m. on a Thursday. So there may be disappointment from one uh, segment of your population. So you're, um, it's good to do it. And if it works, it works. And as, maybe not make it a public thing, but maybe ask one-on-one. -on -one. Try, to, try to see, you, you know, you want to accommodate everyone as much as possible. And at the same time, accommodate yourself too. Uh, so coaching delivery. What software will you use to run your coaching calls? Now, um, we're all using Zoom here. I think most people know how to use Zoom by now, especially over the past two years. That's what I would recommend. Some people like to um, use Facebook to run their groups. Uh, and I'll get into that in a second, where you can create a Facebook group. And then you could do a Facebook Live video right into the group. 
uh, it's totally fine. However, in my experience, and again, this is what I like best, but it seems to work is to be face to face with people like we all are right now. And to have the capability of interaction where if one of you has a question, you're not just typing it into the chat, we can actually speak to each other. Um, the ultimate would be we're all in a room physically in the same space every week, but that's not possible. And, and the good news is thanks to technology like this, we can actually have these weekly meetings in a way that still makes sense. And um, not only is Zoom awesome from this face-to-face -face component, but people are used to it and it's easy to set up and it's easy to record um, because you, if you're doing a Facebook Live or other, what, other options, you'll have to remember or figure out how to record and then figure out the replays. And Zoom just makes all of this really easy. The other cool thing about Zoom that I love is that when you are recording a Zoom call, you get a copy of the chat. So if you'll notice, I'll often ask you to type things in the chat. Then once you finish recording, you can always have a copy of what everyone's written, which I think is super important. Uh, next is replays because not everyone will be able to make every call and the people who do make the calls, they still wanna see the replays. So how will you provide the replays of your calls to your members is a question to think about. And that's again, why I love Zoom. Um, one sort of pro tip if you want is that what we'll often do is take the Zoom replays and upload them into a video software like Vimeo or YouTube so that they sit somewhere, unless you have some kind of membership software that is native where you can upload the video files directly. Um, but I still think it's good to have a, back, a backup for your, all your video files. And we use Vimeo. Uh, we've been using it since the beginning of the company, like 2014. Um, and again, using Zoom makes it easy to have replays created. The other cool thing about Zoom now is you can store your videos in the cloud. So you can record right into the cloud, um, which is way more convenient. I still prefer to record on my computer like I'm doing right now because the video quality is usually better. Then there's group discussion. How can the members communicate with you and with each other in between coaching calls? So my suggestion is to use something like a Facebook group or Slack, if, you, if you're familiar with Slack, the software, or a membership program like Circle or Thinkific. Um, right now, we use Circle, which so when you go to the Archangel campus, when you are there for discussion, like the actual member login thing, the software is called Circle. That's what I would recommend, um, unless you want to use the Facebook group. So if your clients um, are on Facebook, Facebook group is the simplest because they're native and they're used to logging in and it's free. Um, Circle, I believe, is 39 a month for the starting package or 79 a month for the professional. And once you're at that place where you need to, to host people and store uh, replays and have discussion and communication, I would consider one of those. Um, Katie's asking about Mighty Network. Um, that's another option. I'm not that familiar with it, uh, and I'm sure it's great. I just don't know much about it, but it's probably similar to Circle. Whatever you use. This is where you will share your replays, get discussions going in between sessions. And thank you, David. It said Circle Pro is now 99 a month. Awesome, thank you, David. Next is communication. Uh, now this is specifically how you communicate with members throughout the program for things like announcements and reminders and links. Um, so you're, each receiving emails from us and messages, even within Circle saying, here's your link for the next call, here's the time for the next call, here's the replay. Um, we, we're at the place where we're automating these things, we're setting up all of these messages in advance. When you're first starting out, um, literally, if you want, you could do it all manually, meaning once a week or, or a few times a week, you are emailing each of your members manually, and that's totally fine. Once you get used to what the cadence is and what the rhythm is of messaging, then the next level is to have some kind of CRM software um, or email marketing software like MailChimp or AWeber or ActiveCampaign. Um, we use ActiveCampaign. It's a bit more advanced and still kind of simple to use. Um, 
but again, technically at the beginning, if this is your first time running a group, you can totally do it manually emailing one by one just to get used to what to say. And then once you start to see the patterns, you can set up email automation. Now, money, big topic. What are you going to price your program? Um, this is a conversation we'll start today and we'll go deeper in our next module. Um, but before we have this conversation, I'm, I'd like some feedback. If you already have a program, whether it's one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching or service that you do or any kind of group, what do you currently charge? Please type it in the chat. So the price of what you charge and what you offer, meaning it's $500 for this program and it's one-on-one, -on -one, or it's $79 for, for an hour of coaching with me or what, whatever you're currently doing, please share what it is in the chat right now so people can see what's already happening. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So Brian is saying 199 mastermind group meets twice a month. Um, Sue Ellen, 997 for 12 weeks. And Brian, 199, how often, what is the duration of that? Is that like a monthly price or is that a, uh, for a few months? Um, Kevin is 229 per month. Katie is 250 an hour, 300 for the entire course. Sophie, six week group coaching for 497. Uh, so thank you, keep, keep it going. I just want all of you to see what currently exists, what's possible. And if you've never done this before, you'll, you'll start to gauge what is happening out there in the world. Now, pricing is often as big a decision as start date is. And I have another question for you. What have been, for those of you already in business, whether it's coaching or whatever the service is, uh, what have been your biggest challenges when it comes to pricing or charging or asking for money? Please type your answer in the chat. So what have been your biggest challenges when it comes to pricing or charging or asking for money? So asking for money, period. Thanks, Rhea. Um, Helen's saying underpricing. Initially, not choking when asking for the amount. David, thank you. Kevin, not enough people saying no makes me think I'm undercharging. Kevin, that's awesome. Uh, great insight. Sue Ellen, believing people I want to serve don't have the money. Aaron, feeling of awkwardness. These are all excellent. Uh, throughout this process in Odyssey, I will show you how to um, invite people to work with you in a way that doesn't feel awkward. And will, I believe, cover most of what you've written in the chat. So thank you for all of that. So how to price your program. Um, if you've been working with me in the past, you, you've heard me talk about this. If you haven't, I think you'll love a fresh or different new way of looking at pricing. And price is a story, and we are all storytellers. So people don't buy products and services. They buy stories. And there are three elements of a story, what I would call the dream, the hero, and the gift. And I'll explain what they all are. And I, I've come up with this, what I call the gifted pricing equation. So price equals dream times hero times gift. And let me explain what this all means. What you can charge equals the value of the transformation in the eyes of your clients times who you're serving, times your confidence in providing that transformation. So what you can charge is the value of the transformation in the eyes of who, like in the perception of the people you help, times who you're actually helping, times your confidence in providing the transformation. So the higher the perceived value, the higher uh, caliber of client, and the higher confidence you have in actually making the transformation happen, the more you can charge. Those to me are the three common elements. So let's start with their dream. Um, uh, 
the dream is what people actually buy. And if you've been around me enough, you've heard me talk about this million dollar check. Uh, and the way the story goes, and I'll do it super quick, is I'll ask someone, if I wrote you a thousand dollar check, would you pay me a hundred dollars cash for it? And the check is going to clear. There's no tricks. There's no weirdness. And the person usually says, uh, yeah, that sounds right. And then I'll say, if I wrote you a $10,000 check, would you pay me a thousand dollars? And it's usually absolutely. And then if I say, if I wrote you a million dollar check, would you pay me a hundred thousand dollars? And the person usually says, yeah, it's a no brainer. Uh, and then I say, yeah, but a hundred thousand is so much money. It's expensive. And usually there's a, a laugh or a chuckle because it, they're thinking, yeah, but it's, you're giving me a million. That's a no brainer. And the reason I always do this little fun exercise is to say that we are, we as entrepreneurs are very hyper-focused on the price tag, how much we're, how much someone is paying for our thing and not as focused on the amount on the check, what they're getting from their perspective. So that's the dream. And part of what we're going to be focusing on is telling the story of the transformation in a way that seems like it's a million dollar check and they only have to pay a hundred thousand for it. The amount on the check will become your predictable outcome or your predictable promise. The more you deliver the promise, the more you deliver the transformation, the more it becomes predictable, the more you can charge. Step one is doing it. And that's usually the thing that messes people up. There's so much paralyzation or fear at the beginning that they get held back. And, and I think part of our work together is to support each other from not being held back anymore. And that's part of our odyssey transformation. So their dream is a solution to their current problem. It's a result or transformation or outcome or bigger future. It's what they would consider a dream come true experience. It's their desired feeling. It's their elevated status and the story they get to tell by being elevated. Uh, as an example, if why do people buy luxury or premium things? Why does someone uh, fly business class? Often it's to, it's to tell the story that they've done that thing. And they have a feeling or a relationship with whatever the brand is. It's also the story they get to share by being transformed. If you remember from the beginning, one of the most important things we're going to do together is collect stories. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to create stories for your clients, is to allow them to become success stories and transformation stories for you. The next variable of the pricing equation is your hero. So um, this is often a fun conversation or, or sometimes even debate with uh, clients I have. And I'll, I'll share this weird question. What is 20 pounds worth? So if you are in the health space and you help people lose 20 pounds, what should they pay for that? What is 20 pounds lost worth to someone? And the reason I use this example is because um, the way to lose 20 pounds may be a book that they're buying and they read a how-to book or they pay for a course or they hire a coach. Um, and those are all the ways of delivering the transformation. But now we're talking about who the person is. And if someone um, is, uh, I'm trying to come up with a, a mailman. I'm just making up a, uh, uh, a scenario. If someone is a mailman and he can do his job slightly faster because he's lost his 20 pounds, that's worth something to him. If the person is uh, let's say she is a CEO of a multinational corporation that's doing billions in revenue. And that 20 pounds lost allows her to make very uh, much higher level, better decisions. And she has way more energy and more productive. That could be worth millions of dollars to that company. So what is the 20 pounds actually worth? It's based and dependent on who the client is, not just how they lost it. We often focus on the mechanism, right? We focus on how we're delivering the transformation. We're focusing on us. Let's also think about them. Let's think about who we're serving. And uh, one of the statements that I saw in the chat about uh, challenges with pricing 
is, I believe the wording was something like, I don't think people can afford it or the people I, I have access to think it's too expensive or those kinds of things. What I've discovered on my own journey is that the, um, there will always be someone who could afford it. And part of that is how we transform into becoming the person that can deliver that transformation and build those relationships with the people that can't afford it. They're all out there. Um, they're all waiting for you and each of you. And this becomes a relationship with our own confidence and our own capabilities. And as we get more capable, we get more confident. And my dream for all of you is to realize how this whole equation works. The other thing that I like to say, and, and some of you may have heard me say this before, um, and just type in the chat the first answer that comes in your mind. If you saw a, uh, I'll make up a car, uh, a Ferrari, so a, a 2021 Ferrari, so almost new, for with only 10,000 miles or kilometers, depending on what country you're in, and the Ferrari was priced at $15,000, what's the first thing you would think? So it's almost brand new, very low mileage, and the price is $15,000. Yeah, exactly. Wrong, uh, forward, fraud, something's wrong with it. Why is that? Why, why do you think that? Because the value doesn't match the price. The price is way under the value. So, and this is the, the thing that needs to sink in for all of you. If you are under pricing your transformation, people may think the same thing. There's something wrong. They may have a, an expectation of a, high, of a Ferrari price and you are charging Honda prices because you feel like that's what people can afford or whatever story is happening for you, the right clients may be repelled and you may be attracting the wrong clients. You may want to create Ferrari transformations and you're attracting Honda clients and you're struggling because of it and you're wondering why isn't this working? Part of pricing is storytelling and it's also part of dream client attraction is positioning. Pricing is part of that. We'll get deeper into that next week. Um, <laughs> I love my Honda Odyssey. <laughs> I love Honda too, uh, but I wanna make sure you can all charge relevant pricing that makes sense for you and makes sense for the right people. And then I like to ask this final interesting question. What's easier to sell, a $5,000 program or a $500 program? What do you all think? And um, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, either. Yeah, I, or maybe I should even ask, sometimes I've asked what's easier to sell, $50,000 program or $500 program. It's the same kind of thing. I will share my own experience in this. Um, and depending on the work you do and, and experience of, experiences you've had, you may have seen something, a similar pattern. If, if your program, let's say is $500 um, and the people you are attracting are in that range, their decision-making may be, can I afford this or do I pay my rents today? I'm just making up a, a scenario that I've actually, well, I'm not even making up, I've heard this before. If your program is 5,000 or 50,000 or a larger number, um, and that is who you're having the conversation with, someone who could pay for it, it may not be, can I afford this? Their thinking may be completely different. It may be, is this worth my time? Will I get the transformation I want? Will I actually be able to buy back my time? The um, person who is more on the successful or established side of things, someone who may have more income, more revenue, uh, more money, the thing that's so valuable to them is buying back their time. If you can sell time back to people, that is the most valuable thing ever. And if your program gives people back their time because you are doing all the research for them, you're, you're giving them the path to transformation way faster than they can do it on their own, that is way more valuable. And here's a very important thing. Someone who can afford a $5,000 program, they don't want a course. They don't wanna do it themselves because that's more time. 
you need to give people back their time. You need to make it faster to the outcome that they want. And that is valuable. So now the last variable in the equation is your gift. Your gift is what you actually sell. So the dream is what they buy. Your gift is what they sell. And people, like I said, don't buy products and services. They buy your gift, which is your story, your expertise, your passion, your wisdom. It's your magic potion or your tool or your sword or your map. It's the plan, the framework, the formula, the blueprint. It is the bridge from where they are to where they want to be. And it's leadership, direction, and confidence. That is your gift. In other words, it's also your map. And we're going to obviously be talking about creating your map in this program. So the first step is to come up with a, what I call a retail price or full price that becomes the anchor to your value equation. Then we come up with your offer. So it's yours, Rick. So what is your offer? Um, the offer is the incentives and opportunity you give people as an unfair advantage based on what your retail price is. So um, some of you have made me have seen me do this before. If you haven't, let me take you through this quickly. Let's say you want to um, create a hundred thousand extra in income in a twelve month period as a coach, and you're delivering an online group program, and this assumes you're starting from scratch with no prior experience. And let's also set the retail price of your program. So let's say what you're doing is a 12 week program and you're setting the price at $1,500. That's the retail full price. Okay. Now what? <laughs> okay. So no matter what you price it at, what you're going to offer that people actually pay for your first group is going to be less than the retail price so that they feel like they're getting a deal. And so that as you continue to um, offer your groups, you have the capability of raising your price until it meets your retail price. And this is how it would look, right? So for the first group you do, let's say your goal is to have 10 members and their investment is 500 instead of 1500. So that's the offer. And the way you would position it, and we'll talk way more about this next week, is to say, regular price is 1500 I'm going to give it to you for 500 in exchange for you doing the work to become a success story for me and you allowing me to share your success story in a way to attract more people after this. So, And you'll get way more of my time because I need to make sure you become a success story. So we'll find a way to position your offer that sounds like a no-brainer for them, and they're getting a good deal. And the next time you launch, let's say uh, in the next quarter, you try to attract a few more people and then you can slightly raise the price. And then you keep this process going until a year later, you can finally charge the retail price. You've helped a hundred people create transformations and you've made a hundred thousand in revenue. This is starting completely from scratch. And I mentioned, uh, if you were in my Super Words program, you've probably heard me talk about Joey. If not, Joey is someone who started with me uh, a year and a half ago. He started completely from scratch. He um, quickly launched four groups, doubled his pricing. He's now doing over 100,000 in revenue, uh, joined our Synergy group, all from following this methodology. And he was in our Odyssey group last year. And he started from scratch. Now, if you've already worked with people, uh, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, let's say as a coach or practitioner, and you want to switch to a group model, it's the same pattern, but I would start the retail price at, let's say 3000, and then you offer an incentive for your first group again. So this allows you over time to raise your prices. And even though you're raising your prices, you're still offering a, an incentive. So group two, will get it for 2000 instead of 3000. Group three, we'll get it for 2,500 instead of 3,000. And then you've collected so many stories that it's easier to charge retail price because you have the stories, you have the transformations, and you have the confidence. Like I mentioned at the beginning, part of this whole equation is your confidence in delivering the transformation. And the more it becomes predictable, the easier it is to charge higher prices. And Dr. Julia um, is someone I've worked with where she started off doing one-on-one -on -one coaching in a clinic as a psychologist or, or a therapist. 
And then the pandemic happened and I helped her launch an online group. And um, now she's running seven concurrent online groups, charging more than she did when she was doing one-on-one, all following this methodology. And Julia might actually be here. There she is. Hi, Julia. Uh, Julia is here with us because now she's going to launch a train the trainer certification program to teach other practitioners, which is the next thing I'm about to share with you. What happens if you've created hundreds of transformations and you want to create a certification, like same exact methodology, but if you are training other people in your industry, you could probably charge even more so that you can set the retail price at 5,000, launch your first group at 2,500. And um, after a year, it's the same number of people you've worked with. It's a hundred people. And now the revenue is over 400,000. So this is what's possible. Uh, one of my clients, Jenny, did this process. Um, she's Jenny helps women become fitness models. And she was working with them as a coach and um, launched a certification program for other fitness professionals, other uh, women in the fitness space, and has followed this exact uh, process. So the question you want to ask is what special incentives, price options, bonuses, and or discounts will you offer to your founding members. And again, next week and in our next session, we'll go deeper into what this offer could be. Um, it's in our session called the love letter. And then the final variable to think about is payment processing. So how will you accept payment and what software do you need? We use two, we use Stripe and PayPal, typically mostly Stripe. Um, and I'm curious for those of you who already have some kind of payment processing set up, what do you use? So type in the chat, uh, what kind of payment processing you use? So Brian Stripe, um, PayPal Stripe, Stripe, PayPal Venmo, Stripe and Square, QuickBooks Stripe, perfect. All of these are awesome. Um, all of these are great suggestions. <laughs> Straight cash, Martin. Uh, <laughs> Stripe, PayPal. Uh, so if you don't already have any of these, I would suggest looking into Stripe um, and PayPal, or let's say Stripe to start off with. So my favorite question, I know there's a lot today, a lot of variables, but it's important to go through this process. What has been most useful so far today from today's conversation? Please share in the chat. What's been most useful so far from today's session? Love to hear your feedback. Uh, Rui says you, Rui has a short, uh, excuse me, a story to share. Rui, do you want to come on and share? Uh, I just wanted to share with you guys uh, that the that week of super words was when uh, right before that was when I was supposed to do this just simple workshop and then super words really gave me the courage to make it like a serious workshop and it was supposed to be a free workshop. So I did it and then um, as you know we came into this um, program, I just started um, working at the courage to actually, decide to pitch for a three week course. And I've never charged for anything. I didn't even believe that I was capable of doing anything like this. And I did it. And, um, and it's just been amazing because I <sighs> charging for the class, everything that I did so far, I'm getting, now I'm going to just name my anxiety. I'm getting anxious <laughs> because I get excited and then I don't know what to say. Uh, basically, Everything that I've learned up till now has allowed me to do what I'm doing. And you're right. The hardest thing is just doing it. And the best way to do it is to do it when you're in the moment and through these classes. So the super words allowed me to actually um, do the six week course. I did it last night um, till about uh, the middle of the day. Well, till about the day before I only had like two people. And then all of a sudden I ended up having 10 people. Wow. And some of them actually paid and, um, and uh, it just, you just got to do it. And I'm just so excited because now I'll be ready for 
a bigger session and and um, just learning. I'm just learning a lot. And once you get into it, then all of the stuff that all these amazing tools that you're giving us is really beneficial. And right now we have each other to support yeah. one another, especially with you being here. And, um, and I'm just I know that it's going to be big. So I'm really excited. Just wanted oh, yeah. to share that with you guys. Thank you for listening. Yeah. You're welcome. I'd love to hear from Mike George. <clears throat> Thanks, Gia. Yeah, so I, I've heard your 20 pound story before, but I don't know, today it made more sense and I, I guess I had forgotten about it. Um, but it's really, when you compare it from someone, you know, in the different roles and then you, know, you bring out that CEO, if that allows them to, you know, create millions of dollars worth of value in their world, then that just changes everything. And the whole idea of, Am I charging too much? Doesn't even matter. So yeah, thanks for reminding me. You're very welcome. Uh, Sophie, you have an offer you just created. You wanna share? <laughs> well, you know, it's a combination of what you've talked about today and um, a uh, sales call that I had this morning. Um, I had a person come on who's a lawyer and she's very, very busy and you know, when you said, um, and I was explaining my offer, and so we have coaching call, and then we have the co-work, and we have this, and we have that, and it, was, it ended up being a lot of hours, and I think she was sold, and then I kind of, I could feel her going backwards, like, ah, I think this is too much, and when you said, um, you know, the, the best you can offer is for them to buy back their time, it just, in my mind, all of a sudden, like, the offer I have is not the right offer for her. There's no difference in what the offer would be, but the way I would package it now would be a lot more around gaining your time and you know streamlining and all of that. So I'm going to create it, and put it out there. Brilliant, love that. And, and important lesson from this. So you're in our Archangel Academy group um, and we meet up once a week for an hour for that group. And then you also have access to Odyssey as part of Academy. Um, in the Archangel universe, we also run a program called Archangel Council, which is for typically CEOs or founders running companies doing millions of dollars in revenue a year. We meet once a month. The council only meets once a month. Now their investment is 10 times what Academy is. So you would think, well, shouldn't they get more? And I think this is the fallacy we all have that we think we have to do a lot more things or offer a lot more items because that's in exchange for money. But people don't buy the things. They buy the outcome. They buy the transformation. Sometimes they don't even care what the things are. They just want to know um, that they're, they're cared for and that they, the transformation will happen. And if you start saying you get this and you get this, you get this, you get this. And it's, or for example, um, there's 14 hours a week of, of, of coaching calls because we want to take care of you. See, like see the, see the issue. Um, even in our synergy group, uh, which is another group. So there's Academy synergy and council synergy used to meet twice a week. And then I realized that's actually not good for them. They need that hour for other things. Let's make the, that one hour a week, very efficient. And let's buy them back their time and give them back their time. And for each of you, if you just have that model in your head, how do I sell people back their time? That is so valuable. So thank you, Sophie. Um, Aaron? Yes, sir. Can you share what you wrote as feedback here? Um, yes, sorry, the feedback that I just posted to the chat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the, you know, I've heard you say that, of course, because you have this tiered system and the council sits at the head and of course the demands on their time are highest too, but it, for some reason it landed differently today. It's like, right, this is really, because my work is so vibrational and I love how the last, I can't remember if it's last week or the week before that you were like, so those of you who don't have like a 20 pound measuring stick for your outcome, I really appreciated that. But that's really it. Like if you can deliver, if you are that confident that you can deliver the outcome, the connection, the network, the support, the cohort, the vibratory up-leveling in one hour a month, 
that's like four times more valuable than like having them have to show up for an hour a week. And it's just, it's just a good reminder. Uh, big time. Yeah. Thank you. Brilliant. So thank you all for your feedback so far. And um, I have one quick mission for you right now. In the chat, I just put a link uh, to a post that's already in the discussion area of Odyssey in the campus. And the question is, where do you need the most help right now? So uh, please click on that link so it opens up on your computer. And then when we end today's call, wherever you need the most support right now, based on the past few sessions, type your question in that thread, in the comments of that thread. That way, as we continue the program, we can customize it based on where you need the most help. And in future sessions, we'll do some uh, like laser coaching and, and support and whatever else you need. So when you have a chance, and you could also just log in and find the thread. I just figured it'd be easier if I give you the direct link. So click on that link and let me know where do you want the most support with respect to your circle, your transformation, the map, and eventually your blueprint. Um, and then until next time, have a wonderful rest of your week. See you all very soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks so much.